a great thinker who grasps the East and the West in every aspect. A unique name that not only built the intellectual world of his time, but also the years to come. One of the last great representatives of Islamic thought tradition. Alama Muhammad Iqbal. Undoubtedly, his name is a very special place in the whole Islamic geography. Alama Muhammad Iqbal opened his eyes to life in the city of Sialkut in today's Punjab province of Pakistan. Muhammad Iqbal started studying the Quran when he was still a child. Iqbal received education in Islamic literature under the guidance of his teachers. After completing his higher education in Lahore, he taught philosophy to his students at the government college. Iqbal's entire life passed in India, a British colony. To see the Western culture closely that exploits his geography and the whole Islamic geography, he went to England. Here he learned Western philosophy from the famous philosophers of the period. Although he lived in Europe for many years, he never used the Sir title given to him by the British. In the following years, he returned to the land he was born in and maintained his own unique resistance. Muhammad Iqbal struggled with Western-based imperialism, which reached its peak in the early 1900s throughout his life. He was in an endless struggle for the spirit of Cordoba Mosque as he struggled with the problems of the Muslims in India. The poems he wrote for Cordoba Mosque, which was the greatest proof of the existence of Islam in European lands, touched the deepest part of our souls even today. O oh, Cordoba, stars look upon your precincts as a piece of heaven. But for centuries, alas, your porticos have not resonated with the call of the Muezzin. During his lifetime, Alama Muhammad Iqbal aimed to organize Islamic societies against Western atrocities with his crusader soul. While defending the unity of Islam with his poems and his intellectual world, he also physically travelled the entire Islamic geography from Cordoba to Africa step by step. Muhammad Iqbal went to the Muslim geographies which he could not go with his soul and travelled these geographies with his heart. Despite his suffering life, he never lost his crusader spirit. Iqbal died on April the 21st, 1938, without seeing the independent Islamic Republic of Pakistan, which was his biggest dream. Iqbal is a thinker who always remained alive with his ideas in Anatolian geography too. Even though his thoughts found a place in the whole Islamic world, Muhammad Iqbal left deeper traces on the Anatolian people. Because the most important of the scholars who formed his world of thought was undoubtedly Hazrat Mulana, the light of knowledge that spread from Anatolia. Iqbal saw Mulana as his method of thought as the yeast of the world of thought. Apart from being a resource for him, Mulana became a friend of his painful life. Iqbal went through the same rough era in which Islamic world was as especially in the time of Hazrat Maulana. Just as Hazrat Maulana was deeply shaken by the Mongol invasion, Iqbal had the same feelings in the pillaging of his country by the Western invaders. Today, Alama Muhammad Iqbal's shrine, standing right next to the lodge of Hazrat Maulana, who is the eternal symbol of Konya, is a symbol of these two friends who met the language of heart. Iqbal has a deep and different place in the memories of Turkish people too. During the national struggle, Turkish people were entering the war of independence. The Turkish nation was opposing imperialism with limited means. Iqbal could not remain indifferent to this relentless resistance of the Turks that was not only in Anatolia, but on all fronts. 
Iqbal was following what happened in Anatolia from the poems of our national poet, Mehmed Akif Ersoy. He was communicating with Akif by letters, and even remotely, he was interested in Anatolia, the last fortress of Islam. Since the thinkers of the great history of Islamic thought were fed from the same source, they could be together in a sense even if they never met. Hazrat Malana, Muhammad Iqbal, Mehmed Akif were all enlightening their world of thoughts with the light of the Prophet Muhammad. Muhammad Iqbal was in constant action for the Turkish nation from miles away. He invited the Muslims in India to the Union and explained in the most impressive way that brother should help his brother. He picked, recollected, found and brought everything together by organizing those around him for the victory of Anatolia. With the organization of Iqbal, the marriageable girls sent their dowries, the students sent their allowances, the people who had two loaves of bread in their homes sent one of it to Anatolia. Because the people of Pakistan knew that Anatolia's victory is the victory of Islam. Muhammad Iqbal followed this tough struggle of Turkish people with pride and tears. Muhammad Iqbal was addressing the hundreds of thousands of Pakistani Muslims who gathered to support the Gallipoli Front with a deep feeling. Although years have passed since the death of Muhammad Iqbal, Turkish nation has never forgotten him and the Pakistani people. Ogun. Lahor Meydanı'nda toplananlara hitap edenlerden biri de şair yazam Muhammed İkbal. Muhammed İkbal o kürsüde büyük bir hicap içerisinde birkaç gün önce gördüğü bir rüyayı anlatır. Rüyasında Peygamberi Zişan Efendimiz'i aleyhissalatu vesselam gören İkbal hissiyatını dizelere şöyle döker. Dedi Hazreti Muhammed, cihan bahçesinden, cihan bahçesinden bana bir koku gibi yaklaştı. Söyle bana hediye olarak ne getirdi? Dedim ki ya Muhammed, dünyada yok rahatlık. Bütün özlemlerinden umudu kestim artık. Varlık bahçesinde binlerce gül ve lale var ama ne renk ne koku hepsi de vefasızdır. Yalnız bir şey getirdim. Kutlanmıştır tekbirlerle. Bir şişe kanki eşi yoktur. Namusudur, vicdanıdır. Buyurun bu Çanakkale şehitlerinin kanıdır.